Now I want to take as our text tonight a passage in the 12th chapter of Hebrews. These words. And this word yet once more signifies the removing of all those things that are shaken as of things that are made, but those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. Since we were here in the 50s and then in the 60s, things have changed. I was asking Joe Ulrich a moment ago, I said, don't you all still have street cars? It seems to me I've seen one since I've been here. And he said, yes, they've just put them in. And uh, I thought, well, that's the first city I've been to in a long time where they had street cars. The last I can remember was in Bucharest. They had street cars and it took me back to my boyhood and childhood when we had street cars in our town of Charlotte, North Carolina. But many things have changed since we were here. And those of us that are senior citizens can really see a change in Portland. Things that you younger people take for granted. We were born before television, before frozen foods, before antibiotics, before nylons, before Xerox, before credit cards. For us, time sharing meant togetherness, not computers. <laughs> and software wasn't even a word. We were before pantyhose and drip dry clothes, before ice makers and dishwashers, Cheerios, instant coffee, decaffeinated anything, and, Mac <laughs> and McDonald's had never been heard of. And I don't know how we lived. <laughs> if we'd been asked to explain CIA, VCR, UFO, ERA, NFL or JFK, we, we would have said, well, that's alphabet soup. <laughs> when you think of how our world has changed and the adjustments we've had to make, today's senior citizens are a pretty hardy bunch because we came along through all of that. <laughs> there have been great political changes. Hungry. We were in the People's Stadium in Hungary about three or four years ago, and it had the largest crowd in its history to hear the gospel. 115,000 people in one service. South Africa would have never thought of having an integrated service in those days. We went to South Africa. We did not go until they guaranteed we could have integration. And we went there. And we can show you on film where the newspapers had headlines saying, Billy Graham says apartheid is sin. And uh, then there have been gigantic geophysical and ecological calamities across the world. I read last Sunday's Earth Week column in the Argonian a diary of some of the things that happened on the planet last week. It talked of tropical storms last week, like the worst hurricane to slam into Hawaii in this century. It continued to report on the damage from Hurricane Andrew in Florida. Norman Mitski's house, who is on our team, uh, looked like some giant hand had come down and just lifted the whole thing up and lifted everything out. We went to Homestead in southern Florida and my son, who's here tonight, Franklin Graham, has an organization called Samaritan's Purse, and they had already gotten 10 trailers in place down there by the time we got there to see it. And what a devastation that was. You cannot imagine what happened in Southern Florida. You can't see it on television. Stefan Nelson, my grandson, spent his full time down there working, handing out water and bread and uh, things, and. He saw on top of one roof this sentence that somebody had written. Okay, God, you got our attention. Now what? 
And the newspaper went on to mention Typhoon Sybil, the tropical storms, pain in Roseland. Monsoon floods washed away entire villages in North India and Pakistan, killing thousands of people. There were earthquakes in Zaire and Nicaragua and minor shakes in many other parts of the world. These are just the things that came out of one newspaper. This is all in addition to environmental changes such as the sudden drop in levels of protective ozone over the Antarctic mentioned in the column that might signal major damage. I could go on and on. And that was just in your newspaper last week. We're living in a changing and increasingly dangerous world. That's the point I'm trying to make. It's not getting better. Do you have a purpose in your life and does life have meaning to you? Or is your life cracking up and going all to pieces? The big question today is, what is meaning? Fifty years ago when I started preaching, the philosophical question was, what is truth? Today's question is, what is the point? The Bible says the heart is deceitful, above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Your heart, my heart, is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who would believe that after a storm hit Miami and southern Florida like Andrew, that there'd be looters taking advantage of it? I read an article in the Charlotte Observer last week that domestic violence cases are soaring after the hurricane in southern Florida. We don't know our hearts. We don't know what would happen until it actually happens. Andrew Morris, the great philosopher in France, wrote, the universe is indifferent. Who created it? Why are we here on this puny mud heap spinning in infinite space? He said, I have not the slightest idea. And there are many people that take that attitude. Albert Camus, who was the great philosopher that everybody quoted a few years ago said, man cannot live without meaning. Are you trying to live without meaning in your life? Now here are some of the things that the philosophers were saying that people think about when they're alone. When you're alone, here's what many people that are here tonight think about. First you think about, well I have to suffer. Maybe now or soon. I must struggle to make ends meet. I must struggle in my marriage. I must struggle with my girlfriend, my boyfriend, because it seems that things are going wrong. I must struggle to make grades in school. I'm at the mercy of chance. I feel guilty all the time and I don't know what I'm guilty of. I ask the question when I'm alone, who am I? I know that I must die and I'm afraid to die. I don't want to die, but I know I'm going to have to die. Every person in this audience 75 years from now will be dead. A scientist recently asked the question on television, who made the earth? Why is it here? What is its future? We have the answer. We just don't know. Then he said an interesting thing. Perhaps we're all going to have to restudy the biblical accounts. And that's exactly what many atheists are doing today. They're restudying the biblical accounts. The first time I met Mr. Yeltsin in the Kremlin, I talked with him, and he told me that he'd been an atheist. But he said, I'm no longer an atheist. He said, I've come to believe that there's something beyond this life and something bigger than we are. And he said, I've started going back to church. And he said, my grandchildren are wearing crosses around their necks and I'm glad. Now that was a couple years ago before the coup. T.S. Eliot once wrote, where is the wisdom 
Think of it now. Where is the wisdom that we've lost in knowledge? We have a tremendous amount of knowledge. We have universities by the scores and hundreds and thousands throughout the world. But we've lost wisdom in the midst of all of our knowledge. Jesus said, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity. In Luke 21, 25, distress. That word means that we're pressed from all sides. And perplexity means no way out. If you'd gone to Rio to that conference on ecology and how can we save this planet, you would have come away like many of them came away, confused and mixed up, discouraged and hopeless. President Kennedy said a quarter of a century ago, no man entering upon this office could fail to be staggered upon learning the harsh enormities of the trials through which he must pass in the next few years. How right President Kennedy was. He went on to say, each day the crisis multiplies, each day their solution grows more difficult, each day we draw nearer the hour of maximum danger, and time is not our friend. In the midst of all these changes, there are certain things that have not changed and will never change. 